So here I want to talk about the definition of Poisson's ratio, uh, which is denoted by nu. So nu is Poisson's ratio. So what is the definition of nu? So first of all, uh, we have to define what is an axial direction and what is a lateral direction. The direction of the load, whichever that is, you see here we have this block subjected to this axial load. So that actually becomes the axial direction. So the red here is the axial direction. And then perpendicular to the axial direction, be it like that or like this. So we can call this, for example, y-axis and z-axis and call the axial direction x-axis. So x is axial and y and z are the lateral direction. So this is the lateral and y is also lateral. Okay, so now the definition of Poisson's ratio is very simple. Poisson's ratio is defined as the negative of the ratio of lateral normal strain, so it doesn't matter, it could be epsilon sub z or epsilon sub y, divided by the axial strain. So by strain here, obviously we mean normal strain. Okay, now the reason we have negative is that regardless of how you apply the load, if the load in this case in tension, if you put the axial direction in tension, the other two directions would compress. Uh, as a result, one of these strain is going to be always negative, regardless of how you loading, in tension or compression. Because you don't want to have a negative ratio, you just put a negative. Sometimes you see the absolute value. So Poisson's ratio has to be a positive. Poisson's ratio, by the way, is cannot be more than 0 0.5. It's obviously larger than zero and cannot be more than 0 0.5. So the maximum Poisson's ratio for any known material is 0 0.5. And so if you get a Poisson's ratio of 1.2 in a problem, you know that you have done something wrong. So maybe you uh, have to switch the lateral with axial. You made a mistake about your axis. So uh, here again, I want to emphasize that this, is, this could be either epsilon sub y or epsilon sub z. And this one has to be epsilon sub x always, if you want to call them x, y, z, the way I have defined them. One other note about Poisson's ratio is that Poisson's ratio obviously is a unique property for a given material. So for example, for a steel, Poisson's ratio is about 0.3. For aluminum is a little bit larger, 0.33 or so. So this is for a steel and this is for aluminum. Also, one note to remember is that Poisson's ratio only applies for uh, isotropic material. Isotropic materials are, are the materials whose properties are independent of their directions. So when you calculate the modulus of elasticity of a Poisson's, uh, of a uh, isotropic material. Doesn't matter if you test it in the x direction or you test it in the y or z direction, you're going to get the same uh, modulus of elasticity, the same property. This is not the case for materials like composites or even wood that are going to give you different properties if you test them in different directions. The other thing is that Poisson's ratio is only valid this property if you are with the, in the linear elastic zone. And obviously the material has to be homogeneous, which means it cannot be composites. Because composites, we have Poisson's ratio values are going to be different. Uh, uh, those problems, are, uh, those uh, situations are called orthotropic, those type of materials. So Poisson's ratio is valid within the linear elastic zone. It cannot be more than 0.5 for all the known values. The Poisson's ratio is equal to 0.5 at most, and it's larger than zero. And one other relation is that modulus of rigidity, if you have the modulus of elasticity E and you have the Poisson's ratio, this relation is valid, that G is equal to E, which is modulus of elasticity, divided by 2 times 1 plus nu. Of course, G is uh, shear modulus, or modulus of rigidity, and E is modulus of elasticity.